Hello my friends, it's Lisa and welcome to my bullet journal setup for June. I'm really excited for my spreads this month because I'm doing a heartstopper theme. I originally was going to do something completely different, but I just wasn't loving the way it was coming out, so I decided to kind of wait on doing that and maybe do it at a different time when I'm more into it. So when I kind of went back to try and decide what I wanted to do this month, I thought June is Pride Month, I'm obsessed with Heartstopper, the math is mathing, why don't I do that? <laughs> So I wanted to keep it pretty simple. I wanted to take some inspiration from the comics, but also kind of the show and the little like animations that they add in the show. So I tried to replicate the kind of hand lettering from the comics, the kind of Heartstopper title in all of my like headers and everything for this month. And I'm drawing a lot of the leaves on this title page that you see quite often throughout all of the Heartstopper comics as well as the show. And I decided for like the color palette, I wanted it to be colorful because of Pride Month but also because the comics themselves and like the covers and everything are very colorful so I decided to use the colors of the spines of the comic book for my kind of color palette this month and I'm really happy with how all of these spreads turned out. I also decided to add a black square kind of outlining the entirety of the title page to kind of replicate the panels within the graphic novel and I kind of used that throughout all of the kind of spreads this month. I thought it added a really nice touch and brought like the comic-esque aspect of it all together. And for my calendar spread, I am just drawing in the actual calendar for the month and once again using the black marker to kind of draw the outline to kind of replicate the panels once again. And then once again, writing June in the Heartstopper font. It definitely was a bit challenging because not every letter Alice Oseman has written in this like hand lettering that they do. So I had to kind of make some up and like just kind of guess at what they might look like. But I think when it's all together, it does look like they should go together. So I think I did an okay job. And I'm really happy that I went with that lettering because I really think it makes it more obvious that it is a Heartstopper theme. And I also decided to color in all of the headers in this pink color because in the like first volume especially, Heartstopper is colored in with pink. I think it's in that in the show as well. It just feels like the Heartstopper color. So all of my titles for the month, all the headers are colored in with this pink marker and any specific markers that I'm using I'll have in the description. So after I go in and write the numbers on the actual calendar, I start working on the kind of doodles surrounding the main calendar. And I knew for these spreads, I didn't want to just do the leaves over and over again. I wanted to incorporate some different doodles. So this is when I got some more inspiration from the show. I do know in the comics, there are some different doodles as well, but I wanted to do the kind of lightning doodle to kind of replicate the moment in the show when Charlie and Nick kiss for the first time and they're like holding hands and there's those sparks. And then I just drew some hearts as well as some flowers. And I also drew a little rainbow as well to kind of bring in a little bit more of that pride theme, but it's very subtle. But I wanted it to be mainly the like heartstopper doodles. I also decided to include on the top right the little air quote bubbles that say hi because Nick and Charlie that's like their thing saying hi to each other and it's very wholesome and very cute so I wanted to include that as well and make the doodles a little bit more heartstopper themed and like a little bit more obviously heartstopper. And then I think that's really it for the calendar page. Oh, I do add a blue kind of drop shadow to the actual calendar just to add a little bit of something to the actual calendar, but then that is it. It's a very simple theme. I think the part of this theme that took me the longest was just replicating the lettering and making sure it looked relatively similar, but the doodles themselves were really quick. So this theme did not take me very long to set up at all. That's why this video is relatively shorter than my other journaling videos because there wasn't as much footage. It didn't take me that long. So definitely an easy theme to do as well, which I really like. And now we're moving on to my habit tracker. I once again just wrote habits up at the top in the same Heartstopper lettering. And then I'm drawing eight boxes for the like mini calendars. That's where I will keep track of the different habits that I want to keep track of this month and when I do them. I definitely do think having these mini calendars for each habit that I'm tracking is my favorite way of using my habit tracker. I think it's just the most helpful and also like the easiest to tell when I've done a habit. So I decided to do it again this month and I think I've done that mostly this year. I sometimes do it differently just to kind of switch it up, but I do think this is the best and easiest way for me. So I'm going in with the green marker to do the kind of headers for each habit. And then I'm blocking out the days in the calendar that aren't actually like days of June with the yellow marker. And then my plan is to use the blue marker 
to like color in the days that I do each habit. So then all of the colors of this like theme, all of the color palette will be used in this spread. I thought that would be the best way to use all of the markers. And then once again, just filling in that empty space with some of the doodles that I do throughout all of the spreads this month. And now on the right hand side, I'm writing faves. So this is going to be my monthly favorites page. I'm just splitting the page up into three different sections, one for music, one for entertainment and one for lifestyle. So anything that I enjoyed throughout the month of June that fits into those categories, I will write it down. And then it's really fun to be able to reflect on the different things I was enjoying throughout the year. And once again, just doing the like black square boxes to kind of mimic the comic panels and doing the doodles and everything like that. But while we watch me set up this page, I did want to quickly talk about my setup for this month's bullet journal video. This is a little bit different than what I normally do. I normally film them at my desk and this is a bit different, but I think I like this better. I think the lighting is a little bit better. I feel like you can actually see what I'm doing. I don't know. I would love your thoughts if you've watched any of my other bullet journaling videos. If you have any, if you prefer this, if you prefer the other setup, definitely let me know. Or if you just don't care. I know probably most people don't care, but I would love to know if you have any opinions. <laughs> Also, while we're here doing a page about favorites, I'd love to know if you've seen or read Heartstopper and your thoughts. I'm sure there are some people who are sick of hearing about Heartstopper, but I absolutely love it and I would love to know if you love it as well. All right, next page is going to be my brain dump page. So writing brain dump up at the top and then just kind of drawing a bit of doodles around the kind of header at the top. And that's really it. I do go in and draw a black square outlining the page as well, just to kind of bring a little bit more of that Heartstopper theme into this page. But I, once again, just wanted to keep this pretty simple and plain and empty. So I have plenty of space to write down whatever I may need. I didn't have a brain dump page last month and I actually still had some space on my April brain dump page so I was using that throughout May but now that page is pretty filled up so I figured it was about time to do another brain dump page, have another one in my journal for me to use. And now we're on to my final spread, which is going to be my first weekly spread, and you'll never believe it. I'm finally setting up a weekly spread differently. All year this year, I've done the same exact layout with the eight boxes evenly spread out on a page, but this month I thought it would be cool to make it look like the comic, to make it look like a graphic novel page, and do kind of different sized boxes equally spread out throughout the spread. So yeah, I just kind of wanted it to replicate a graphic novel or comic spread, the kind of different panels and how they're different size. I thought that that would be kind of a cool way to bring the theme into my weekly spreads, but have it still be really functional. I don't want to make the weekly spreads like too much heavily influenced by the theme and then make them not as functional for me, but I think this is going to work really well and also be a bit different from what I've done the rest of the year. I also decided to go in and draw a few of the doodles as well. My camera did die and cut me off, but I've drawn plenty of these doodles throughout the spread, but I'm really happy with how these weekly spreads turned out. I think that they really fit in with this month's theme really well. But those were the final spreads. So here's the flip through of what everything ended up looking like. I'm really happy with how these spreads came out. I love how similar to Heartstopper they look, but also how colorful they are. It just makes me very happy. And also I just thought it was perfect for Pride Month. I, in the few years I've been bullet journaling, have never done a Pride Month theme, which just feels wrong. So I'm super happy that I did it this month. Happy Pride, everyone. And thank you all so much for watching this video and I will see you in my next one.